Right, good afternoon. Uh, we seem to have 11 joined up, which seems to be about the number we, we tend to have. Uh, so it's, I hope you're all well. Um, I hope you're all coping well with the lockdown and so on. Um, lovely to know you that, that you're there again. We'll start in the usual manner. So I'll do three minutes timed um, and you do the usual jobs. Today's title um, is Microphones and Loudspeakers. And it kind of explains what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at how microphones work and how loudspeakers work. And I'll say more on that after our three minutes. So, yeah, first item of business, three minutes of the usual silence. Well, I'll be silent at least. Three minutes um, and then put your title in your book and update your contents in your book and have a read back over at the very least. So read back over what we've been doing recently because it's been a whole week since our last lesson, three minutes. Good suggestions, Max. Um, I know Rasputin, I don't know the other one, but a good suggestion is walk on, walk on music, a banging tune if ever there was one. About a minute and a half left. As I said in the written comments, um, I'll be doing a quiz. As I've done for the past couple, I, I just feel like it works well. I'll be doing a 10 mark quiz, some of which will be of stuff from long ago, um, but five of which, the second five, will be of recently learned material. So use this time wisely and read back up what you've done, but also make sure you have some scrap paper if you prefer to do the quiz there.
and that was louder than I remember. Um, that's our three minutes up. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to get straight to the quiz. Um, and like I did last time, I'm going to do it in two sections of five. So these first five questions are from anywhere in physics. They are chosen entirely at random. And uh, just on your scrap piece of paper or in your book, right answers are paused between each one, what I hope will be a, an appropriate amount of time. So question one is this. On a velocity time graph, a horizontal line represents what? On a velocity time graph, a horizontal line represents what? Question two is um, a complete the sentence um, with one word. Atoms of the same element always have the same number of something. I'll say that again. Atoms of the same element always have the same number of something. Lots of these are very short answers, so I don't need to pause too much between them. Question three is this. The region in a longitudinal wave where the particles are furthest apart is a something. The region on the longitudinal wave where the particles are furthest apart is a something. And again, I need that word that will complete that sentence. Question four, another one word answer. Um, it's a complete the sentence. This time the word comes mid sentence. Changes of state are caused by the amount of something a substance has. Changes of state are caused by the amount of something a substance has. And question five is one to draw up the answer. I'd like to sketch, it doesn't need to be a detailed drawing, I'd like to sketch the IV characteristic for a filament lamp. Please could you sketch the IV characteristic for a filament lamp? So that was question five. We'll go through questions one to five before moving on to the other ones. So question one on a velocity time graph, a horizontal line represents constant speed or words to that effect. The answer is that the object is going at a constant speed constant velocity would do as well. Question two, atoms of the same element always have the same number of protons. That's really what makes one element different from another. They can have different numbers of neutrons and we call that isotopes. They can have different numbers of electrons and we can talk about different ions of an atom. But if they have the same number of protons, they are the same sort of element. Question three, the region in a longitudinal wave where the particles are furthest apart is a rarefaction. I was looking for the word rarefaction there. Question four, changes of state are caused by the amount of energy a substance has. I'd accept some variations on that, uh, things like the amount of latent heat, or even the word heat I'd accept. Um, you might, might even have talked about kinetic or potential energy any of those would actually be fine there. But broadly speaking, the cha changes of state are caused by the amount of energy a substance has. And then question five, uh, the IV characteristic for a filament lamp. Again, one I'll just loom towards the camera to show. Um, so IV characteristics, don't forget, they were always this sort of graph, V for potential difference, I for current. The order of the axes doesn't matter as long as you get the characteristic shape to match, but this is traditional, this is standard. And for a filament lamp, you have this. You have non-ohmic behaviour. These are not directly proportional, but you do have behaviour that works the same whether the uh, filament lamp is plugged in one way or the other. And you have this sense that the current is tending towards a limit. 
in the end, you can put more and more voltage across that filament lamp, but it will not lead to an increase in current in the end. It tends towards a limit. And it does so because the filament lamp gets hotter and the resistance increases. That's the kind of hidden story behind this. But the answer to the question is what you're seeing there. So that was question one to five. And um, now we'll do five questions on more recent material to do with magnetism and electromagnetism. And question one of that, this second lot, is this. Uh, the strength of magnetic field surrounding a conducting wire depends on. We've had this question a few times. The strength of, uh, sorry, the strength of magnetic field around a conducting wire depends on. Just give you a moment to write that. I'm going to be more specific with question two than the actual wording of it. I'm going to draw a wire. And the wire I'm going to draw is like that. So for a start, you've got to remember what that symbol means and what that symbol tells you about the wire and about the current flowing through it. But I could surround that wire. So there's a picture of a wire. That notation means something, and that's, that's one thing I'm testing here. But I'd also like you to draw the magnetic field pattern around that wire. That's question two. Question three is a question about the generator effect, and here it is. Um, give two factors that increase the size of the induced current in the generator effect. More than two factors you could choose from, but I'd like you to give me two factors that would increase the size of that induced current that you get in the generator effect. Question four, and I hope I'm timing these right. Again, it's really hard for me to know. But question four, a magnetic material which becomes a magnet when it's placed in a magnetic field is a something. It's another question we've had, but it's good recall. A magnetic material which becomes a magnet when placed in a magnetic field is a something. So that was question four. And then question five, another one to sketch. Um, I'd like you to sketch, and it's not one you've done before, sketch the potential difference time graph produced by a dynamo. Sketch the potential difference against time graph produced by a dynamo. And I'll give you a moment to sketch that. And then we'll go through every one of those five, and then we'll start learning something new. Right, we're going through those second set of five questions. Question one was the strength of the magnetic field surrounding a conducting wire it depends on. Sorry, I don't need to be towards the camera for that one. Um, the strength of that magnetic field around a conducting wire depends on, I think the most obvious one, the, the size of the electric current flowing through it. So the amount of current was to that effect again. You could talk about distance away from the uh, wire, but the main thing the strength of that field depends on is how much current is flowing through that wire. That was question one. Question two, uh, draw the magnetic field around this. So first thing you needed to understand when you saw that was which way the current's going. And what you're picturing is you're picturing a wire that's coming out of the page like that with a current flowing out of the page. And so with, once you do that, you employ the right hand rule. Your thumb points out of the page and you see the fingers curl around like that. So what you were, what I was hoping you'd draw here is circular field. Try and get this detail right. Try and make sure that the distance increases as you go further out. 
because that tells us that the field weakens the further away that you are. You add space. But then we have to add the direction of the field. Current coming out of the page, fingers curl as we're looking at it anti-clockwise. So in some way, you have to label that there's an anti-clockwise direction to this field. So that was question two. Question three, give two factors that increase the size of the induced current in the generator effect. Well, one of the things that increases it is the strength of the magnet. And um, you might have talked about how much wire is in the field, the length of the wire or how many coils it has. And indeed the speed of the relative movement. Remember the generator effect was this idea that if we move a magnet in a magnetic field, a current will be induced. So if you move that faster, if you move that uh, magnet faster, you'll get a larger current being induced. That was question three. Question four, a magnetic material which becomes a magnet when placed in a magnetic field is an induced magnet. Induced magnet, the answer there. And then question five, another graph sketch. I was after the potential difference time graph for a dynamo. So, We saw a couple of graphs on sheet, the sheet we had last time that looked like this. Potential difference or voltage went here. Above this line was positive. Below this line was negative. Zero in the middle. But a dynamo, as a thing spins, there's a cycle of how much voltage is induced. But you should end up with something like that. So it's like a wave, but it's a wave that only ever stays above zero dynamos produce direct current. And that was the graph I was hoping to see there. And I think that was a tough question. So particularly well done if you got that. Right, that's the end of the questions. And so I think I'll start teaching you something new. I'll start uh, teaching you about microphones. I'm gonna show you, I've not been able to build a microphone. I have built a loudspeaker for later in the lesson. Um, don't get your hopes up, it's not a very loud loudspeaker, so it's kind of a misnomer. But it does show how they work and it is working and I'm quite proud of myself because I had to scratch around for what materials I had at home to make a loudspeaker. I'll show you that later. But a microphone I'd already brought um, in my supplies from school. So I can show you that first and it may even involve me playing the trumpet off camera. But again, and not for long, please don't worry. Uh, but I will use that so that we can see what the microphone's doing. And my last thing here is, is almost a health warning. In this lesson, because I've got a super quiet loudspeaker and a super loud trumpet, uh, there'll be real variation in volume. And I'm only saying this in case you're listening by headphones. If you're listening by headphones, I'll give you some warnings when there's about to either be something very loud or very quiet. So you can adjust your system volume as you need to. I don't want to blast anyone's eardrums. So I hope that's clear. I'm going to show you now how microphones work. So a bit of adjusting of the camera involved, and bear with me one moment. Right, uh, what's on your screen now is not a microphone, it's an oscilloscope, but that's going to allow us to see what the microphone is doing. I'm just pressing on autofocus to make sure that's nice and clear. So that's an oscilloscope. I remember what it is. It's basically a voltmeter that gives a display. It measures voltage, but going across is time. And so what that allows you to do, unlike a voltmeter, is you can see a picture of a changing voltage. That's particularly useful when you want to see waves. So I'm going to turn the microphone on in a minute and I'm even going to start playing the trumpet at it um, and you'll see the waves being made. If I go back to the mock that you did most recently, the PPE exam, there was a question and you weren't prepared for that question. You hadn't studied this yet, but there was a question. What is a microphone for? And it was a question that was broadly badly answered. Of course, it would have been. You hadn't studied it yet. A lot of people think microphones are for making sounds louder. Well, they're not. That's what loudspeakers do. Loudspeakers make sounds louder. So a lot of answers said things like 
to make a sound wave bigger and to make a sound wave louder. No, that's not a microphone's job. A microphone's job is the first part of that process. Before you can make a sound louder, you need to be able to capture it. That's what a microphone does. A microphone takes a sound wave that approaches it and turns it into an electrical signal, into an electrical current. And today we're going to learn how a microphone turns a pressure wave in the air into an electrical current in a wire. I'm going to ask a question now, and I know we've only got a few who like to use the comments, but I'll ask it and just see who can answer first and, and see how many people can answer. I'd like to ask this question. Do microphones use the motor effect or do they use the generator effect? I'll give you a moment to answer that now. Do microphones use the motor effect or the generator effect? Excellent. Got four answers almost at the same time there. Really well worked out. Microphones use the generator effect. Remember what the generator effect is for. It's the idea that if you put movement in, and in this case, the movement is just air moving, but it's still movement in, the, the outcome in, any, in some ways is more important than the generator effect. The outcome is voltage or current. So yeah, microphones employ the generator effect in a really clever way. Now I'm going to switch the microphone on now. Well, it's already on. And not much happening on the screen. That's why I need something that will make a slightly louder sound. The voltages we're talking about are surprisingly small on a microphone. So I'm going to grab my, well, it's not a trumpet, actually. It's a cornet. And I'm just going to play some notes. I'm going to toot some notes at it. And here's my first warning. If you're listening on headphones, just be ready. This is about to be louder than anything else that you've heard so far. I'm not promising a virtuoso performance. I'm really just doing this so that you can see the shape of the wave on the screen. A couple of things that are worth just paying attention to there. They're good revision of waves. Hopefully you saw that the louder the note, the larger the amplitude of the wave. So loud sounds make for high peaks on a wave. I'll do that again. So I'll try and play something relatively quiet. And now I'll play the same note, but louder. So remember, amplitude affects loudness or loudness affects amplitude, whichever way you wish to think of it. And then I'll now play a note that's relatively low and a note that's relatively high. And again, that's our reminder that the higher the frequency, the more waves you see on the screen, the higher pitch the note sounds to our ears. So starting with a low one. <laughs> trumpet that's a C it's actually a B flat on a piano keyboard now I'll play at least an octave up or possibly a bit higher I have to say it's less compelling on that screen but I hope you saw that the higher pitch note had shorter wavelength it had a higher frequency so that's just by way of reminder but what we now now need to understand is how you get from a sound wave hitting this microphone to an electrical signal that we can see on that screen. And to do that, we need to understand what is inside this. Now I'm going to talk through it now, then I'm going to show an animation, then we're going to draw a picture of this together. Our version of it's going to be fairly simple, but inside this, first thing to understand, inside this microphone, there is a magnet. And there's normally something called a diaphragm about halfway down the microphone head. That diaphragm is just made of a material that vibrates easily when sound hits it. So the diaphragm vi vibrates when the sound wave hits it. And that diaphragm is attached to the magnet. So whenever the diaphragm vibrates, 
the magnet also vibrates. Then all you need to do to turn that into an electrical signal is use the generator effect. In other words, surround it by a coil of wire. And if you have a vibrating magnet surrounded by a coil of wire, you will generate a potential difference and therefore a current inside that wire. It will be an alternating current because the vibration is one way, then the other, forward and backwards. So the magnet is moving one way, then the other. And that means the current we induce will be going forward and backwards. In other words, we've captured a wave. And it doesn't matter whether it's a person speaking like I am now. You're hearing me, after all, by virtue of a microphone. It doesn't matter whether it's a person speaking, a whole orchestra, or a trumpet in the case of what I just did. Each of those sounds is unique, and it will create a slightly different and unique wave within the diaphragm, within the magnet, and therefore a unique alternating current in the coil. Well, I'm gonna show you a, an animation of the insides of a microphone now, and then we'll make some notes on it. Screen nice and clearly. Nearly there. Right. Now, if I've got this right, although I think I might have to go and press play on this. This is an animation that will show how a microphone works. But what you're seeing here first is a magnet. I'm going to come to the other side of the screen so I can press play and point at things all at the same time. Oh, in fact, it is working. Yeah, there goes the diaphragm. There goes the coil. And this is just going to show us a voltage being induced. So this is within the head of the microphone. And what you're seeing now, and it probably isn't picking up one on your screen, is this is vibrating slightly, making the magnet vibrate slightly inside a coil, inducing an alternating voltage, an alternating potential difference. So I'll just let that run one more time. And you can see it's a bit of a slow start, but yes, um, you have a magnet, diaphragm, coil. And this is just measuring voltage. But when that diaphragm vibrates, the magnet vibrates. Look for it there. Hope you can see it. And as that vibrates forward and back, a voltage is induced. A potential difference is induced. Well, that was what was going on inside the head of that microphone. So we're going to try and draw this out now in um, a slightly less stylized way, but a slightly more useful way, putting it in the whole context of the microphone. Um, and then we'll write a short description of how it works. So you'll need ideally pen, pencil, possibly a ruler as well, because we'll do a subheading. So pen, pencil and ruler. I'm just going to move some things around. As always, it just takes me a moment to get into position, but I think I am now. So, um, a subheading, please. And could the subheading be microphones? I'm going to commit a cardinal sin now, and uh, I've not got a ruler to hand, so I'm just going to use a pen to do so. Microphone's the subheading. And we'll start with the diagram, I think. No, we'll, we'll start with the diagram actually after one sentence. And it's just confirming what the question you answered for me before. So let's put microphones make use of.
Microphones make use of the generator effect. Stop. Microphones make use of the generator effect. The next bit, now I'm still using this felt tip so it comes across clearly on screen. Um, the next bit's going to be hard for me to draw clearly. So forgive me, I'll try and make it as clear as I can. I might have to make it a bit sort of over large compared to how I normally would to make sure that everything's clear. But first thing is I'm going to sketch out the sort of broad shape of a microphone. So that is the head of the microphone. And then we're going to show the sort of handle that you hold as well, going off in that direction, like that. So draw something roughly that shape. Now, deliberately leaving it on detail so that I can add some of the detail inside it. Starting with that diaphragm. Now this is not quite how it's laid out, but it's a good enough understanding of what's going on for it to be worthwhile. So inside that microphone head is the diaphragm. And we'll label that first. Diaphragm spelt like that, D-I-A-P-H-R-A-G-M, diaphragm. And a bit like you saw on the animation then, the idea is that that diaphragm is in some way attached to a magnet. And to show it's a magnet, I'll just put N and S on it, north and south. If you don't have room to do that on yours, there's, there's absolutely no trouble there. And I'm about to draw some coils of wire over it anyway. So it will be slightly obscured. Well, I think from context, oh no, I probably will add that that's a magnet actually. It's just gonna be easier. So that is a magnet. And then yes, we need to in some way, now we won't go overboard with it, but we need to show in some way that there's coils being wrapped around this. So I'm just gonna loop maybe even two coils around it. But then importantly, I want you to show that the wire carries on and out here. So we have the idea that in some way, there's some wiring that brings the wires out to there. And in fact, I'm just gonna curl them down into this space here. Now, I'm determined to keep this diagram fairly uncluttered, but it is important that we label the coil. And then I'm just really going to label one more thing. I'm going to label arrows here and here. And I'll write what that means underneath, but it's my way of reminding you that there's an alternating current being induced. So AC is induced. So I think that diagram more or less shows us everything we need to see. So now we'll do a, a bullet point description of how that microphone works. And we'll go straight uh, right from the beginning, from the pressure wave in the air, the sound wave, um, right through to the induced Now we bring in the idea of electromagnetic induction or of the generator effect. So what I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to put this as, as clearly as I can, but also as fully as I can. Um, we're going to talk first about a potential difference being induced and that causing a current to flow. So magnet vibrates. This induces 
alternating. And I'm going to use PD for potential difference. That is a common shortening. But if you think when you read back that, that you'll forget what that means, then you can write the words potential difference if you want. I keep it as that. This induces alternating PD in coil. This causes, and again, I'm going to use shortenings, AC for alternating current, AC to flow in wire. And that is how microphones work. So the pressure wave causes the diaphragm to vibrate. The diaphragm causes the magnet to vibrate. And because that magnet is housed within a coil of wire, um, the vibrating magnet induces an alternating potential difference within that coil. And because that coil is connected to a circuit, that means that an alternating current can flow in that circuit. And you've captured electrically, you've captured the sound as an electrical signal. And that can then be fed to loudspeakers or to anywhere else. It's an ingenious and yet surprisingly simple piece of equipment. Right, I'm moving the camera about again because I'm gonna teach you about loudspeakers now. My moment's greatest triumph. So let me just turn this around. Yes, so here on screen, um, just under a week ago on Friday, I said that one of the things I would pledge to do by the next lesson is to try and build a loudspeaker from stuff I had at home. I've not been able to, to get into school because of, of lockdown restrictions. I can't sort of nip into school, into my uh, lab and steal some equipment back home. So I had to make do with what I had at home, which has limited the success of what I've been able to do. But I have managed to build a loudspeaker and I hope by doing that, I'll be able to show you um, how the loudspeaker works and how it's constructed. Um, I'm just reading up. Has there been a problem? I'm reading lots of comments that uh, uh, there was a problem with connection, but it looks like we're all good. I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. Sorry, that entirely passed me by. I like to try and keep um, Keep a note on what's going on in the chat, but I just got carried away, I guess. But yes, assuming you can all see me now, I'm about to show you the loudspeaker I've constructed and hopefully show you it working as well. So let me just bring the camera down to the table. And I'll just clear away the microphone from before. And I'm going to replace it with my proud and joy, my brand new loudspeaker, which I think you'll agree is an absolute thing of beauty. Just look at it. Right, this is my loudspeaker. Now, I made a second one, hoping it would be better than this. It actually turned out to be worse. But the good thing about that is I've also got a second one I can now refer to. There is not much in the loudspeaker's con construction that will probably surprise you now that you know a little bit about this topic. So the first thing to draw attention to is the fact that at its heart is a big coil of wire. Well, I've got one here. So actually, yeah, this is kind of a two cup device like that. I'll take it apart for a moment. I may regret doing that because it can be really temperamental to get it to work. But in this first cup, I've just placed, and it just has a bit of blue tack, or I think it's white tack actually. But in there, so I'm not holding that very well in front of the camera, there's a, a magnet. Now you can see two button magnets in there. They were the strongest magnets I had to hand. They're not very strong. That's why this magnet, uh, this microphone, sorry, this loudspeaker does not work very well. I've added as many extra magnets as I could, but at its heart, um, a loudspeaker needs to have a good quality magnet. And I don't have such a magnet, which is why the microphone, sorry, the loudspeaker I made is not of the best quality. But it starts with a magnet 
and that stays where it is. You sometimes see loudspeakers called moving coil loudspeakers. And that's because unlike the microphone, it's actually the coil we're going to get to vibrate. The magnet stays where it is. And inside it, in fact, I'll use my extra one. This is not the one I'm going to use. It's just I don't want to mess about with that one too much for fear it won't, won't work. But inside this, I've got a cup. And then on the end, I just got a roll of paper. Roll of paper. And then I tried to find wire. And again, that's not something I have huge amounts of at home. This was an old piece of Christmas lighting that I took apart to try and get some copper wire. This one didn't happen to work, but I've done many, many, many turns of wire around this. So it's just a coil of wire stuck down to a cup. The cup is the thing that's going to sort of make the sound. And it is a, an absolutely remarkable thing to me even now that just by making a cup vibrate at the right frequency, forward and backwards, up and down like that, just by doing that, you can make the sound of an orchestra, you can make the sound of a pop band, you can make the sound of a person speaking. I find it absolutely remarkable. That is the thing that's going to move. So yes, it gets housed within this first cup. And the coil then sits around the magnet. And that all sits fairly neatly like that. I'll just try and turn it such that you can see it well. That all sits fairly neatly like that. So we had, I'm sorry if I'm laboring the point, I just want to make sure it's absolutely clear to you. We had a magnet and then we had a coil and the coil has a sort of hole in it made of paper for the magnet to go in the middle of. So now we have a magnet surrounded by a coil of wire. Another reason this won't work very well is the wire I've got. I was hoping to find some copper wire. This is brass wire and it's not a very good conductor. And therefore my uh, generator effect just isn't working very well. I don't have a very strong magnet or a very good conducting wire. But I did have lots of this wire, which is why I chose it. I've surrounded this with 200 coils. So there's 200 coils in there. And then you can see it's connected to the wider circuit here with some crocodile clips. And these are pretty temperamental too. They're not gripping very well. And if this doesn't work in a minute, that's the first thing I'll check. And I've wired it all up to my laptop. And I've pl uh, plugged it into the headphone jack so that normally whatever comes out of the laptop um, in terms of sound will come out of this. I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm going to try it now. So I'm going to put a song on. I was trying to think of what song to play. And I went for Good Vibrations by the Pet Shop Boys. That's just what we'd call a physics joke. It just seemed an apt thing to choose. So if this works, in a moment you'll hear, and you may wish to turn up your sound now, you'll hear very faintly Good Vibrations by the Pet Shop Boys. Let's see. So I'm going to just go and play that now. And then I'm going to bring my camera really close with its microphone so that it can hear what's coming out. Oh, well, I can hear it. But you're going to have to confirm for me with comments in a moment. I'll tell you when to tell me. You'll have to tell me if you can hear it. So I'm just going to take the camera off its mounting. So it can get really close. I know you're not seeing much except a window now, but can you hear? Tell me now if you can hear it. Well, Harry can hear it just about. I'm getting some yeses here. Oh, well, I am kind of thrilled. Sorry, I know you're not getting the most useful view just of an, a window sort of upside down. But yeah, what you're hearing, let me just put it on screen to give it some context. Ooh. Should never go handheld, this is disastrous. Where is the camera on this thing? There we go. What you're hearing, although you may not be able to now, 
but you are just hearing a cup vibrate. And yet that cup sounds remarkably like the Beach Boys singing. And that cup could sound remarkably like one of the great orchestras of the world playing hundreds of players in one ensemble. Or it could be one of your loved ones speaking. And yet a cup vibrating can make that sound. And I think it's especially remarkable given all the bad connections. So you can see these dodgy connections here. I've used a bit further along the way, these crocodile clips that are barely clinging on. And yet somehow through all of that, this cup is making the sound of the Beach Boys. To me, it will never not be remarkable, but it's an incredible use of the generator effect. So as I bring it close again, you should be able to hear it again. I think it might be on to the next song on the Beach Boys collection, but I'm glad you could hear it because it took me quite some time to get it to work. That is a loudspeaker. Well, once again, I'm going to show you an animation of it and then we'll make some notes on it. Um, and so you'll just have to bear with me once again while I move the camera back to its original position. So yeah, before I show the animation, actually, if you, I mean, there, there are worse things you can do by being locked in at home. It may require you to order a magnet, but if you can get some strong button magnets, then you're a long way to being able to make a microphone. Um, all you need, it could be a paper cup. There's loads, by the way, of videos on YouTube of people making microphones, so you can try one. It could be a, a plastic cup, it could be a paper cup. Um, you can even do them with bottles and things like that. Um, as in sort of an empty Coke bottle and things like that. But if you have a strong magnet and enough cold wire, they're probably the two things you might have to order in. You can try making your own magnet. Then you might have to get creative with using things like your headphone, uh, an old pair of headphones to make a connection to your phone. But there's a chance at least uh, that you'll be able to get that all working if you fancy that as a project. And if you want any... Uh, tips on how to get it working, do ask. I've managed to myself. But a microphone then, sorry, I keep calling it a microphone. It's a loudspeaker. Um, a loudspeaker works like the animation I'm about to show you. Well, I was hoping to, bear with me one moment. Right, so I'm hoping this animation will scroll and scroll as well, but I'll just make it nice and big on the screen. Sorry about all the movement today. I knew it was going to be one such lesson. Right, well, hopefully you can sort of see what's going on here. Um, this time, remember, and we can read it more right to left than left to right, the outcome is sound. In the case of a microphone, that was the input. The pressure wave was what went into the microphone, but the pressure wave is what comes out of a loudspeaker. And you can see a bit like my um, design, there's a bit of reversal of roles. So the magnet here stays stationary. The magnet is unmoving. It's the coil that moves. And I said to you before, that's why they're often called moving coil loudspeakers. And so the idea is that in comes the electrical signal, an alternating electrical signal. Um, and because it's alternating, then this time the motor effect works in two different directions. When the current flows one way, the speaker pushes out. When the current flows the other way, the speaker goes back in, pushed by the motor effect. And because that means this whole thing is moving forward and backwards, it's vibrating. Then all you do is you make a cone. I made a cone out of a paper cup. You can make a cone out of a piece of paper. Most loudspeakers you buy, and here's one, 
There is nothing more fancy than a bit of cardboard. On this one here that's just in front of you then, you can hear me tapping it. Hopefully it sounds like cardboard, because it is. It's just a thin piece of cardboard. Basically, you need something lightweight that can push air forward and backwards. It has a nice big area, a big piece of cardboard, and it just pushes the air forward and backwards in front of it. Well, that's what the cone does here. And as the cone vibrates, the air in front of it vibrates. That creates compressions, it can uh, create rarefactions. It creates a sound wave. It is a remarkable, remarkable thing. Well, I've slightly overrun, and I think I begin to ramble when I talk about microphones and loudspeakers because I just find them so fascinating. So what we're going to do to finish this lesson is the notes. We're going to save the questions for tomorrow. I think that's absolutely fine, and we can even do a shorter lesson there with a quiz and just going through those. That seems fine to me. But for now, I'm going to adjust the camera again. I'm going to turn my speaker off, which is still whispering in my ear, at least from where I am. And we'll make some notes about how loudspeakers work. So just bear with me for one moment. Right, so I think I'm in position. I may just need to zoom the camera out. There we go. And a similar drill to before. We're going to make some notes about how loudspeakers work. So a subheading first, please. Subheading loudspeakers. And then just underline that. And my diagram on this, uh, we'll write the opening sentence in a second, but my diagram is going to read, unlike the one you saw, it's going to read left to right, as it were. So the input, the current coming in, will be on the left of the diagram. The output, the sound, will be on the right. I think in that way it kind of matches our microphone diagram quite well. But first, an opening sentence, loudspeakers, which I'm choosing to write all as one word, loudspeakers make use of the motor effect. Full stop. Right, now for a diagram. Uh, so as I say, there's going to be current coming in on the left. Um, but I think I'll start by getting the shape of the loudspeaker sort of looking fairly effective. So first, from the side, we'll draw something representing a cone. As such, we'll call it a cone. Well, as you might appreciate, each loudspeaker has a slightly different construction inside. But then we're going to have there's just a cylinder that comes off this cone. And I'm going to draw it slightly like that to hint at some three dimensionality to this diagram. I'm not going to label that specifically. Rather, I'm going to label the coil that goes around it. Oh, in fact, now I need to put the magnet in first because then the coil is going to go across. So into that gap, we'll put a magnet north, south. They don't tend to use bar magnets like I'm showing here. It's just a, a good stylized version of it. Um, and it just makes things nice and clear. So in here we have the magnet. But now my beautiful picture of a magnet needs to be surrounded by a coil. So just looping over here again. Just a couple of coils of wire, I think will illustrate the point well enough. But then again, we'll make sure that our coil goes to an external circuit. And a bit like last time, 
let's just add our arrows to, to imply that there is an alternating current being able to flow back and forth in that wire in that coil. And so our description could go something like this. In fact, we need to show the pressure wave somehow as well. Uh, so coming off that, I'll just call it sound wave. And over here in our diagram, before we said AC is induced, it's not induced here. We'll say it's supplied. So AC is supplied. So again, you can read this diagram left to right. AC is supplied. That causes the coil to vibrate around a fixed magnet. Or maybe put next to the magnet fixed around a fixed magnet and because that coil is attached to the cone the cone also vibrates and that vibrating cone causes the air in front of it to oscillate compress and rarefact and you get a sound wave so let's capture that in the simplest way that we can um, so ac flows in coil the, um, then let's put this causes it to vibrate around magnet um, magnet causes cone to vibrate And then cone causes air particles to compress slash rarefact. Now, I'm not sure that exists as a verb now that I write it, but I hope from context you can see what I mean. You end up with areas of compressions and rarefactions. And so we can finish by saying this is a sound wave. So that is a very simplified but hopefully useful description of how loudspeakers work. If you have an alternating leader of them, do buy them away in an email if you don't think I've explained them particularly well. Um, but yeah, thank you for bearing with me through all of that. It had been my intention tomorrow uh, to start telling you about transformers, but actually that will now wait till next week. And I think what we'll do tomorrow, you don't need to print out anything new. And so I won't send out any extra email tonight. I might just send one out as a reminder. Um, but there won't be anything extra to print because we can do the questions that you've not yet done then. And we'll also do one of our quizzes. And so tomorrow might even end up being a slightly shorter lesson, but I think that's fine. I think we can be flexible in that sense. And then next week, we've probably got two lessons left. I need to teach you about how um, transformers work and then teach you some equations associated. It's two or three more lessons worth of content. Um, and I'll tell you about those next week. So for now then, um, yes, I might send an email just to remind you about tomorrow, but it's 10 past nine tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be live from nine, it's the early slot. Um, if you have any questions about how this works, then find them away by email and I'll try and answer them before that point. 
Um, but I think all I need to do is remind you to stay safe and hope that you're all okay. And yes, do tune in tomorrow. Thank you very much for, well, everything you've done in terms of your dedication. It's always great to see the 10 of you turn up every time. So take care of yourselves. I will see you as it were tomorrow and we'll practice some of this knowledge about loudspeakers then. So I'm just checking there's no other questions. Right, yes, it sounds like the stream, so apologies, it sounds like the stream came back and forth through that and I'm really sorry, I'm not aware of that unless I check the comments as I do. Um, but yeah, watch back if there's anything you missed and ask me any questions if there's anything you feel you missed that you can't sort of catch up on. And goodbye for now, thank you very much. See you tomorrow.